So where does all this humidity come from inside the house? The most common sources of humidity are crawl spaces and cellars without vapor barriers over the ground, bathroom and kitchen exhaust fans not working properly or no fans at all, leaky clothes dryer vents, boiling food and water, excessive air leakage to and from attic spaces, crawl spaces and outdoors, and oversized air conditioning systems. Let's discuss number one, crawl spaces and cellars without vapor barriers. There is almost always some amount of moisture under the ground and the purpose of a vapor barrier is to prevent that ground moisture from evaporating up into the house. Even if the ground in your crawl space looks dry to you, it can be deceiving and it's still likely allowing moisture from further below to evaporate into your house. So properly installing a good vapor barrier is essential to controlling moisture. Number two, bathroom and kitchen exhaust fans not working properly. This is one of the most overlooked issues we find in houses because people assume that if the exhaust fan is turned on, that it's actually working. The reality is most exhaust fans will only move about half of what they are actually rated to. And this is mainly due to the way that the exhaust duct attached to the fan housing is run out of your house. Even well-installed exhaust fans will rarely move the amount of air that they're rated for. So we generally recommend installing larger exhaust fans than you think you need to make up the difference. In brand new homes, we often find that exhaust ducts are kinked, bent, crushed, or simply way too long to move the amount of air to outdoors that they should. There's a lot of science behind how air flows through ductwork, including exhaust ducts. But the main thing to know here is that flexible ductwork restricts airflow more than solid metal ductwork. And the longer the exhaust duct is, the more turns and bends are present, the lower the airflow will be through them. The best case scenario to get your exhaust fans working properly is to use straight metal or PVC pipes from the fan housing for the first five feet at least, and ideally the entire way out, and reduce the number of turns that duct needs to make before exiting your house. Never allow exhaust ducts to terminate inside an attic or a crawl space. This will dump humid indoor air into these spaces and can create conditions that will grow mold and mildew. Always run the exhaust ducts outside of your attic, preferably through a gable end wall if you have one. If you don't have a gable end in your attic, you can run the exhaust duct out through the roof or through the soffit, but just make sure to install a backdraft damper on the end of the duct before it goes out of the attic. That way you won't get outside air coming back in through your exhaust fan into the house. Number three, leaky clothes dryer vents. The same premise as the exhaust fan applies to clothes dryer vents. But the difference here is there is very hot and humid air leaving the clothes dryer. And if it doesn't make its way all the way out of the house, it can very quickly raise the temperature and relative humidity inside your home. More often than not, exhaust ducts connected to clothes dryers are not cut correctly to fit the space between the clothes dryer and the connection in the wall where the air is supposed to go out, which leaves a lot of extra flexible ductwork that ends up getting kinked or smashed behind the dryer. If this is the case in your house, you need to move the clothes dryer away from the wall, measure the distance between the port and where the dryer will be, and cut the exhaust duct so that it only has about six extra inches of space to connect the dryer to the port inside the wall. This can be difficult to do because of the limited space behind the dryer and the fact that the exhaust port is usually at the bottom of the dryer and wall behind it, so you might need some help to do this properly. Make sure you use a metal clamp to secure both ends of the exhaust duct to the dryer and to the port in the wall. Do not use duct tape for this purpose as it will eventually lose its hold and blow off one of the ends. Number four is boiling food and water. If you like to boil food, you probably already know how much moisture it releases into the air inside your house. If you don't have an exhaust fan in the kitchen like a range hood, then opening a window is your next best option to let the moisture escape outdoors. If you live in a hot, humid climate, Opening a window will probably allow more humidity inside from the outdoor air. So an exhaust fan is the best solution during summer months. Number five, excessive air leakage from attic spaces, crawl spaces, and outdoors. This is a big source of the humidity in a lot of homes, especially older ones. In fact, the older the house is, the more air leakage there's generally going to be, and therefore more moisture from outdoors and hot attics in the summertime will make its way indoors. Number six is oversized AC systems. This one is often overlooked simply because most homeowners have no clue whether or not their AC system is too big for their house, so they often look for other possibilities for the cause of their humidity issues. 
A lot of heating and cooling contractors frankly don't understand this either and will attempt to sell you on a bigger AC unit to fix the problem when in fact a smaller AC unit is probably what you need. In order for your AC system to properly dehumidify the air inside your home, it has to run for at least 15 to 20 minutes and the longer it runs, the more moisture it will remove from the air. 